time, we're going to talk about supraventricular tachycardia, also known as SVT. We're going to identify the characteristics on an EKG and talk about nursing interventions and treatments for it. So let's go ahead and get started. So with supraventricular tachycardia, like the name says, something is starting above the ventricles. So it is a rapid heartbeat due to an increased electrical stimulation somewhere up here in the atria or in the AV node. So this causes an uh, additional electrical impulse, rapid electrical impulse to get down to the ventricles and the ventricles contract at a rate of 150 to 250 beats per minute. That is so fast. And because it's contracting so fast, we have less blood going to the ventricles. So guess what? Cardiac output decreased tremendously, which is why most people are very symptomatic. So let's look at the characteristics of SVT on the next slide and break it down. Using the six step method, step number one, let's look at the rhythm. Do we have a regular rhythm or an irregular rhythm? So let's count some boxes. From here to here, we have six boxes. From that one to that one, we have six as well. And let's do one more. From there to there, we have about six. So our rhythm is a regular rhythm. Step number two, let's count the heart rate. Y'all ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight. So twenty eight times ten because we have a six second strip is 280. However, because it's abnormal, let's do the 1500 method because it's a lot more accurate. So 1500 divided by six, hold on. 1500 divided by six is gonna give us 250 beats per minute. And remember that is more accurate and very helpful with these kind of rhythms. So our heart rate is gonna be 250 beats per minute. That is so fast. Think of the normal heart rate of about 60 to 70 beats per minute. You're talking about going three to four times as fast as it normally needs to. So step number three, let's do the P to QRS ratio. Do we have one P wave followed by the one QRS? So look at the P waves on this strip. It's kind of hard sometimes when somebody's in SVT to find the P waves. It's hard to tell where the T wave ends and the P wave begins. On this one, you could argue that these are P waves. Some rhythms, when people have SVT, it looks something like this. And so there's that. And so it's hard to see if, if the, um, sorry. So here, it would be hard to tell, is that a P wave? Or is that a T wave? But here, because we have a little notch, you could say this is a P wave. So P waves. And every P wave on this strip is followed by a QRS. So if your P waves are identifiable, you would have a one-to-one -one ratio. In step number four, let's do the PR interval. And let's just go ahead and count from here. Well, let's find one that I didn't mark. From here to here. And we have about two boxes. So that would be 0 0.08 seconds. And remember the P normal PR interval for sinus rhythm would be 0.12 to 0.20 seconds. But when your heart is beating so fast at 250 beats per minute, the PR interval is how long does it take from the P wave to get to the QRS? How long does the, from the atria to get to the ventricles? Well, when it's beating that fast, it's gonna take a lot less time. So that's why the PR interval is usually shorter. Same with the QRS complex. If you remember the QRS complex is how long does it take for the electricity to go down through the ventricles? Well, here we have one box. So 0 0.04 seconds. Again, because it's beating so fast, it's gonna travel. The electricity is gonna take a lot less time. So in step six, we gotta identify a rhythm, which we have SVT. So let's recap the characteristics. Our rhythm with SVT will be regular. Heart rate will be anywhere from 150 to 250 beats per minute. If you have identifiable P waves, the P to QRS ratio will be one to one. PR interval is usually less than 0.12 seconds. QRS ratio is less than 0.06 seconds. And our rhythm is SVT.
But because of the high, high, high chance for a decreased cardiac output, we have got to do something about SVT as soon as possible. So let's talk about that. So usually when people come in with SVT, their main signs and symptoms are a fluttery feeling in the chest, palpitations because their heart rate is going so fast. They also get short breath, chest pain, lightheaded, and hypotension also because of decreased cardiac output. I can't say that enough. Nursing interventions, you got to find out, are they stable or are they unstable? Got to get a 12 lead EKG. Sometimes when you see SVT, it can get confused for AFib with RVR. So you got to get that 12 lead EKG so you know how to, how to treat it because it can, you know, obviously it's different if it's AFib. So let's go ahead and talk about what to do for treatment measures with SVT. So therapeutic management, find out what the cause is, what is causing them to become SVT sometimes, to be an SVT, sometimes anxiety, pain, increased caffeine intake can do it. Um, other times it can be heart or lung problems. So if it, the cause is something simple, treat the cause. If not, control the heart rate. Find out if the heart rate is, if you have a patient and their heart rate is 245, do a vagal maneuver. Try to get them to uh, bear down to slow down the heart rate. If that doesn't work, we can do medications like beta blockers or calcium channel blockers. According to the ACLS guidelines, you got to find out if they're stable or unstable. If they're stable, we can give them adenosine. If, remember, that's where we would do 6 milligrams first. If that doesn't work, then we try 12 milligrams. Adenosine tries to stop the, the heart rate or slow it down tremendously. So when it picks back up, it starts out normal. Or we can do a, uh, if they are unstable, we can do a synchronized cardio version. Something else I want to mention about SVT, if they have SVT and it sustains, meaning sometimes people can have a run of SVT. So everything is normal. We are in a good looking sinus rhythm. And so all of a sudden, all of a sudden we have a run of SVT. And so if this just lasts for about 12 seconds, just a little run of SVT, that's great. Just watch them. However, if this sustains and they stay in SVT, we've got to follow ACLS guidelines and do something about it. So the key points to remember regarding SVT are the abnormalities. The heart rate is usually greater than uh, or between 150 to 200 and feet, uh, ah, 150 to 250 beats per minute. Our heart is going way too fast. Sometimes the P waves are, can be pointed or hidden between behind the T waves. Nursing interventions, determine if your patient is stable or unstable. If you can, find out the cause and treat the cause. Treatment measures would be to follow AC, ACLS guidelines. If they are stable, we can give them adenosine. If they are unstable, let's cardiovert them right away to try to convert them. And so I hope that you guys have enjoyed this lesson regarding SVTs and feel more comfortable identifying it on an EKG and knowing what to do. Make sure that you guys check out our other resources that are attached to this lesson. And as always, go out and be your best selves today and happy nursing.